So tell me about this garden. How well, first of all, it's Maxime's dream garden. That's the first thing. Yeah, it's a, it's, well, obviously it's a vegetable garden matched with flower garden. And, uh, you know, we, we made it that size mostly because we had, the, we had the land available and we had two old apple trees that were there that we wanted to, you know, keep anchor. anchor. Mm -hmm. So we kind of designed it around what we were dealing with, which was those two trees. We created like a dining area. But you also designed it according to seeing it from up top from in above. the space. Yeah. From our, when we're in the house, we're actually seeing the beds that are super yeah. well placed and equal. We, we lined up the windows of the building with the alleys of the garden because the idea was really to connect those two concepts. And usually you see a vegetable garden like on the side of the lot, you know, fence and, and not pretty. And we wanted to do something, the, the nicest or most prettiest vegetable garden. So this bed is all our herbs, aside basil, which you'll see elsewhere. So this is really the thyme. We have the coriander. Uh, we also have the dill over there, the soj. Uh, we have Japanese basil. And obviously, I must apologize for the skilled gardeners because there's stuff that is overgrown. Uh, but we're waiting for you guys. So, you know, we just let things bloom so it would look better. But it's, it's not the way I like to keep the garden. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have the strawberries. Uh, obviously, they're off seasons, but you can still see some of them. I think we produce about five kilos of those with this small bed. You know, cake, pies. Obviously, this is the breakfast area for our green juice. So you got the kale, the celery, lettuce. Um, you also have the beta card, which I don't know how to say in English. So this is what we feed each morning. We come and we snap a few, a few of those for, you know, and you can see how this is amazing because look at how this is crisp and, and, and this is truly, you know, you cannot get better than this in terms of vegetables. We have some eatable flowers and mostly you know for decorating the salads but also it's really to bring the bees in the gardens that's part of their very very popular we have a lot of tomatoes because mostly that's what we like to cook uh, so l rooms a cherry small italians ones many colors you'll see them all around and here is my melon bed which is quite amazing look at this you know and we have also i'll show you that's, we have this the first time this year, <coughs> watermelon. So, no, don't know what it's gonna taste, but it's quite great, great to have this. It's quite impressive, you know, you, you would, you, we were not expecting that production and that, you know, that result from, from our little 8,000 seeds that we planted one by one this spring. Under the rain. Under the rain, because that was the only opening we had between two trips. I was so frustrated. <laughs> and, and, and I, I was looking at the seeds and I had to Instagram so many times because I was like, oh, really? He, oh, this I is... dropped it again, you know? <laughs> this is well, what we're doing? see a couple of odd things, it's where he planted things. <laughs> I planted them well. I did, I did, I did well. <laughs> and Max was all about eight inches. We had to I measure was measuring in the rain. The, and he was And I'm uh, like, he, he really, people? <laughs> so next year, it's going in the ground the way I want it to go in the ground. Which going to be? <laughs> <laughs> So would you say it's like a French-inspired, English-inspired? Yeah. It's formal as French gardens, so you get the alleys. There's two networks of alleys. They're tilled by four degrees because the one side of the gardens will match with the new building that's going to come, which is going to be tilled by four degrees. Because really annoying, the four-degree thing? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it was, a, thing it was, was annoying. Like... It was annoying. And we, we had to redo the beds twice because it became eight <laughs> degrees and the thing did yeah. not work out. I was so. OK with the zero degrees, four <laughs> degrees, whatever degrees. It was all good. But anyway. But I had my four degrees. Yeah. So there's obviously a little fountain in the middle to cross path. The great thing was the fence. Obviously, this was a big investment. We have deers. We had to go seven feet high, the garden and slope. And at the end of the day, the fence kind of played a couple of things. First, it's the grower. So we have sweet peas on, on them this year. Secondly, the way it's designed, it, it's, it's becoming, it's kind of like the house becomes, a part of the house becomes a pergola and the pergola mesh into a fence. And that was kind of trying to see, this is an auxiliary building, but the footprint includes also the garden surroundings. So it creates those Smart nice alleys. 
Ah, uh, yeah, I try to. Is this what happens when an architect and an interior designer get their hands dirty? Uh, yeah, but at the same time, <laughs> there's a, there's some there's some really great conversations or or arguments fights. and fights, but it's okay. It's part of the process. Two minds yeah. coming together. With with each our own version of what we'd love to see. Oh, we have our but own I, agendas. But you know. <laughs> it started as a koi pond. However, we have about 45 frogs living here, and you can see the little shell there that started as an experiment of aquaponics, and they've just been, you know, reappropriated by the frogs, and we call them our little cabanas on demand because you can see frogs have, you know, a couple of they have they have good time there. You can see that there's a there's something happening over there, and it just keep us, you know, happy to have you know, little friends around us. Zach doesn't really like them, but you know, as long as they don't move, he's fine. Obviously, this is his garden. It's, I, I just love to be part of the flowers and part of the vegetables and part of the whole thing, but I don't take care in the gardens the same way he does. Obviously, he's, he's all that's, about the flowers yeah, in the garden. That's nice and stuff. The and, and the, the chickens. chickens. And the bees. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Great day today. <laughs> I've got seven of those, so that's, I think they were expecting you guys. <laughs> you know, I've got a friend of mine, uh, we gave them a few, and she's coming from Haiti, and she said that it's been 30 years that she hasn't tasted an egg like this, because the yolks are orange, they're huge, and they're super, you know, juicy. And so now I've got one, you know, customer that is taking all my eggs. <laughs> that way. Oh, son them stuff. Way. Way, c'est meilleur que des vers de terre. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I thought I would improve their agents, you know, by putting a fountain there, but obviously they don't really need it. <laughs> this is so good. This you better not get stained. For no, I won't get stained. Sting? Stung? Stung. Sting, stung, sting. Hey, Bob? Okay, beekeeper. Good to go? Max always comes with, okay, I have something. I'd like you to keep an open mind. That's well, always how he brings it up. I think it's all about the process of everything. It's yeah. taking the time to do any of these experiences. And for me, I, all the experience that I love to have with our friends and family, or, or even the two of us in the garden, is all about those moments where it is our little Tuscany life yeah. around a table. It's really, really fun. Mm. So the structure itself is actually part of the old house. So we took out some, uh, some walls inside when we started a couple of years back and we used these. We just had them plan and just put them on actually Ikea uh, bases. So I like the harvest feel. Obviously these type of tables always need to have a cloth because they're too hard on the hands and you can get them um, in the skin so easily. But I love it with the cloth and I love the fact that it's aging and I don't have to worry about it. It's never about my table. <laughs> it's always about Max's bread. Exactly. Everybody oozes and awes over Max's stuff. And I love it. I think Max actually gets a lot of fun out of doing this. It's never been when we were in the city or just decorating. Max is not a very strong uh, decorator. He's not about that at all. He's much more about architecture. And I always felt that it was always this is Max's garden, so I'm only accessory to Max's cooking, Max's moments, Max's bread, and anything that he'll bring to the table, that either the zucchini or so on. It's really his moment, and I'm only here uh, as the accessory. I dream for this. <laughs> so you're an architect turned... Baker slash farmer slash contractor and designer assistant. <laughs> <laughs> and a husband. And a husband. <laughs>